Hi guys, it's DJ from Cozy RC and I'm very proud to finally show you my finished M950. This is a 37.4 inch or 950 millimeters long mono hull. This is my own design, my own production, my own build. And this is actually part four of the build series where I show you the finished product and I'm going to give you all the details about the setup, how it runs. I'm going to show you the footage, so let's go. So this M950 is part of my M series mono hulls. Currently I have three sizes, the M500, which is 500 millimeters, so the number mentions the length in millimeters. Uh, I have the M700, which is 700 millimeters, and I have the M950, which is this one, which is 950 millimeters. And in inches, that is 19.6 inch, about 27 inch, and 37.4 inch for this one. So this is the biggest and the latest M-Series which I added to my fleet and I absolutely love it. This boat is suitable for a 6S or 8S setup. I tried both and it just runs awesome. So if we take a closer look at the hull, this mono is actually quite wide. It's a pretty wide hull and also the bow is pretty wide. And uh, when we look at the V-shape, it has a very common V-shape. The angle is about 23 degrees. But what is characteristic for this hull is the, these spray rails on the side. And with these spray rails, this hull doesn't really need turn fins. That's also why I block the holes. Furthermore, when we look at the bow, uh, or actually the bottom of the hull, it's maybe difficult to see, but it has a pretty deep V on the front. And this deep V makes it more suitable for choppy water. And it also makes it that this hull corners really well. And here is a side profile of the hull for you. Kind of a classic design, I think. And this is also the first M-series hull which I built that I painted. So my M500 and my M700 are just uh, blank wood. But for this one, I wanted to give it a nice paint. And uh, I kept it simple, just a warm yellow color. And these texts and also this text on the side, Mad Hornet, and the Hornet on the front. These are water slide decals. So these decals I printed with a laser printer. And uh, what you end up with is a very thin uh, decal. And with some water, you can slide it on the hull. That's why it's called water slide. <laughs> and then after you push away the water with a, a towel or a cloth, you have to dry it, let it dry, and then just spray paint it with a clear lacquer. And then it's just absolutely perfect. You don't even feel the sticker anymore. And it just blends in great. So there's a top tip for you. If you want to make a custom boat, water slide decals. You can get them with a clear background, such as these. So the paint of the hull comes through the, the empty spots. And you can also get them in a white background because most printers cannot print white ink. And then you have just uh, the base white. This line with this arrow shape, I actually painted on the hull, which uh, I think gives uh, a nice touch to the Mad Hornet theme, like uh, some wings and uh, a sting pointy shape, which matches nicely with the stinger of the bee. So let's take a look inside. Or before we do that, I will show you the cockpit. All of my M-series hulls, all three of the sizes, have this exact same cockpit. And uh, it basically consists out of two, or no, sorry, three wooden parts. The base part, the, just uh, the flat wooden piece, which uh, blends in with the deck. And then we have one big piece over here, which is bended, and it really bends like this, it doesn't crack. You can see it from the inside, maybe you can better see it from the inside. So you see we have the base plate, then we have the one in one piece, like the cockpit shape. And in order to bend it like this, the wood grain is in this way. And then, of course, we have the top part. 
the roof, so to say. And even though it's from wood, I added some flotation, just in case I will lose it, it stays afloat. So here we have the inside of the hull. Um, again, each M series is more or less the same layout wise, but the M950 has uh, different bulkheads compared to the M500 and the M700. It has uh, two big longitudinal ribs going from the transom all the way to about here, which you can see here, over here. And they also hold the motor mount. And they also support the big LiPo tray, which we see over here. Just for this video, I installed uh, the LiPos. I normally store them in a LiPo bag, of course. But there's plenty of space for your LiPo setup. It will fit 2.3S, 2.4S. It will fit even 2.6S if you want for a parallel connection. So plenty of space. This hull is made from wood because I sell this boat as a laser cut wooden kit. And after I assembled it, which you can see in the three previous parts, I carbon laminated the inside of the hull to give it more strength. And I also like the aesthetics. Then from here all the way up to the tip, it is filled with pool noodle. You can see a piece here, but it's basically jammed with pool noodle. And even on the side of the hull, I put as much pool noodle as I can, also on this side, just to keep it afloat. Because this boat with 37 inches length or 950 millimeters length, it is quite heavy. Um, so yeah, just in case I have a bad crash, always take care or provide enough flotation. Then we have the servo mount over here. This is part of the kit, nicely laser cut design which fits perfectly on this longitudinal rib and also fits nicely on the hull bottom. When we look at the setup I installed a Rocket RC 4092 1520 kV motor which is this one. This is kind of a budget motor but uh, my first impressions are very good. I actually firstly installed a 4092 1250 kV motor exactly the same. Um, but I smoked it due to a stupid mistake. In the maiden run I had set the stinger negative, so down, and uh, the hull was pushed into the water. I ran it way too long, motor got extremely hot and I smoked it. So stupid mistake, I should have known better, but that's what happened. And um, after that I replaced it with the 1520 kV, which I had also laying around. I'm using 6.5mm bullet connectors on the motor wires. For a hull this size you want 6.5mm bullets at least. Then we have the speed controller and I will switch around the boat so you have a better look at it. Again there's a story behind this. Currently I have this nice ZTW 200 amp speed controller, 8S capable and uh, I love it actually. It's a very nice ESC, it handles great. But initially I had installed a Hobbywing Seeking 200 amp speed controller uh, V4 version, which is actually a very nice unit. It has data logging, it has a Bluetooth connection, so you can see with an app on your mobile phone the amount of amps that your motor draws. You can even see the graph of the amps uh, in time. So yeah. Basically it's a, a great ESC, but it has a strange failure. I didn't smoke it, I didn't burn it, uh, it doesn't smell weird, but it just quits. So when I connect the LiPos and I switch on the ESC, because it has a on and off button, and I throttle a couple of times with my uh, transmitter, the motor just quits. Not actually the motor, the whole ESC, it just shuts off. and. Uh, it doesn't get or doesn't feed power to the motor at all. It doesn't respond to my transmitter anymore. Only after I disconnect the LiPos and reconnect them again. I have no clue what's the issue. And I'm also in contact with the shop where I bought it from. So I hope I get it uh, resolved under warranty. That's why 
I had to replace it. And this is also a great ESC in my opinion. So let's move to the transom of the boat where we see the hardware. I installed this TFL rudder. This is a pretty big rudder. Actually the blade was quite a bit longer but I cut it right underneath the double pickups. And uh, yeah, this is a nice and beefy rudder. Then we have the Stinger. This is a 4.76 mm shaft size or 3 16 for my US viewers. Uh, this Stinger is also sold by several suppliers, TFL being one of them. I really like it. It has a adjustable barrel. Once you cut the flex shaft, basically the barrel length is fixed. And then I have some general trim tabs, quite close to the keel line of the hull. It gives me some options to adjust the right handling. I have them installed horizontally and just above the waterline. So you can see there's a very small edge. During the build, as I said, I did mount or I did make the preparation to mount uh, the turn fins, but finally I didn't put them on because this boat turns very well without the turn fins. Between the flex shaft and the motor, I like to use uh, these ER collets. These are actually made for CNC machining, but more and more they are used for the RC boating uh, hobby as well, because they are very accurate, very straight. This is an ER8 coupler, and uh, you can buy several sizes of collets, which you can put inside, uh, shooting to your shaft. Finally, we have the water outlets over here in the side. So from the rudder, double pickup, it goes into the hull. I bended some aluminium tubes or aluminum tubes, which I made, which I fixed in this mount. And from this mount, they are going to the ESC and the motor. Both the ESC and the motor, they have their own cooling loop and then going exit here. The receiver is installed in between the pool noodle over here and I made a small mount for the tube. I like to use a tube in the boat, an antenna tube, to put the wire a little bit higher and uh, for good reception. Finally, before I show you the running footage, the prop size, I tried I think two or three different prop sizes, 44 mm 1.4 pitch. Uh, 45mm 1.4 pitch and 48mm 1.4 pitch. And um, it depends also on the number of cells I run. So this 1520kV motor with 6 cells is quite a moderate RPM setup. So I can run a 48mm prop and um, when I run 8S or at least so far running 8S I tried it with the 44 and the 45 millimeter prop. And uh, running on 6S with the 44 millimeter prop gives a speed of about 85 kilometers an hour, which is about 53 miles an hour, I think. And running 8S on the 45 millimeter prop gives me a speed of 112 kilometers an hour, which is 70 miles an hour. And that's pretty crazy, I think, already. I did get some comments from uh, other hobbyists that running an 8S mono uh, and getting a speed of 70 miles an hour or 112 kilometers an hour isn't that high. Well, I think it's already pretty fast, but I can recognize what they mean. For such a big power setup, uh, the boat could run faster, even faster. I think they are right, but for this setup, and especially the way this boat handles and the temperatures I read, uh, I'm very happy with it. This is more like a bashing boat, not a speedrun boat. Uh, I have other hulls for that. And uh, after the 8S run with the 45mm prop, I get temperatures on the motor and the ESC around 30 degrees Celsius, uh, which is about 95 or 96 Fahrenheit. Yeah, I think that's great. So I might speed run it a little bit, meaning I will try bigger props on 8S maybe, but that's not really 
what I built this boat for. This is just a nice bashing boat. I ran it at a meeting for electric boats last weekend and it was just running great. I don't have to worry about temperatures and uh, it's fast enough, trust me. So yeah, overall I'm just very happy with this boat. Enough talk for now, let's watch the running footage. Zo best kunnen kloppen. En zo even kijken. I hope you guys liked the more in-depth video with some more details about the hull shape, the hull design and the, the setup that I'm running. Let me know in the comments if I should make more videos talking about my boat and setup and uh, I hope to see you next time. Bye!